Coming to you from Dover, Ohio and Somerville, South Carolina. Two cities with absolutely nothing in common until now. This is Make Photography Great Again, a weekly podcast of commentary on the photographic industry. And now, here are your hosts, Master Photographers Christine Walsh-Newton and Ted Linsack. Well, here we are, guys. We're on episode number four, if I'm keeping track correctly. This is the Make Photography Great Again, not to be confused with the Make Photography Great podcast, which no one listens to. Actually, I'm not sure if that even exists. Um, does it exist, Christine, or no? Am it, I making that up? It does not exist. We are the only people brilliant enough to come up with a title like this. This is it. It's super brilliant. Christine, have you ever heard... So, at one point, you asked me about PPO convention and different things that could be done to maybe make it like more engaging or interesting, or just adding different events and things like that. So let me ask you this. I have this brilliant idea, and we haven't talked about this yet at all. This is a brand new idea, but I'm thinking next year, I'm not sure if this happens at the awards ceremony or it's like a separate event, if it happens maybe in the parking lot, I'm not sure. But I think at some point, it would be incredible if we smashed a giant watermelon with a huge mallet a la Gallagher style. What do you think about that? I think you're crazy. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and there's a cat that just walked in here. I can hear Because her. I left the door open, and of course that's going to happen. Mila, no one wants to listen to you. Okay. I mean, but... Or or Mila can take the mallet and smash the watermelon. I don't know. Yeah, awesome. Um, actually, back to your question. I have no idea where you're coming up with this watermelon thing. You keep talking about this, and I have... I have no idea where this is coming from and why you think it's funny. I just think it's going to be epic. I mean, is there anything more amusing than a huge piece of produce like that smashing into a million pieces? And then it's like people in the front row can wear the ponchos and all that. I mean, we'll keep them dry and clean and all that. But, I mean, can you can you imagine? Like, how awesome would that be? What's I the guarantee point? You, What's the I point? guarantee you... <laughs> There's no point. There's no point at all. But the, the point is you bring people in. What other convention have you ever seen anywhere? Have you ever Okay, let me ask you this. Have you ever been to any PPA convention whether it's a state convention or or imaging or the big the big shebang where they have smashed a giant watermelon? I mean, have you ever seen that? Okay, I'm just going to reel you in here, Ted. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you need to do it, you know? Like spot color, sun flare, that kind of thing. Just saying. Well, sun sunflare is amazing. I love sunflare personally. What do you what do you honestly have against sunflare or spot color for that matter? Um, sunflare. <laughs> I have things against sunflare because actually that's a, that's a negative thing. The whole time I was learning photography, that was a negative thing, and it came from improperly aiming your lens near a light source or, or towards a light source. So it was something that you didn't want. And so here's a bunch of people accidentally getting it and they think it looks cool. Um, I don't believe in doing things because it looks cool if it's not technically, uh, you know, good. I just don't think guess, that's a technical yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much side with you on that. I guess, you know, occasionally I think, man, this is hard for me to say, occasionally... There are instances where I think it can kind of look interesting, but it depends on how you use it, and there's definitely times where I don't do it. I mean, I think a lot of people revert to it because they don't really know what else to do, so you see people doing it all the time, and like they're taking like a family portrait where everyone's you know looking at the camera, your classic kind of pose portrait, and there's a ton of light coming into the lens, and it looks horrible. And something completely fell down in the background like that. I mean, yeah, do you, are, uh, are you like, are you, are you in a porcelain factory or something that's being run by monkeys or? That was actually my cat. Oh my God. Cats. Cats are unbelievable. Uh, oh somebody God. just knocked a dish off this, of the counter. Sorry. Oh my God. This podcast is going swimmingly so far. Yeah. No, so they, so they do this stuff during like these really, these portraits that should be really well controlled and all that. And then you get flare, you know, you get people that do that all the time. I think occasionally though, for certain creative portraits, especially in the course of a wedding, I think sometimes you can create some interesting things. But that being said, 
I don't do it all the time. So I'm kind of split. Obviously, for something like print comp, you know, you'd probably, you would never do that, obviously, because that, that's a big time no no. But I don't know. I'm not so like vehemently against that, like 100%, but I think a lot of people do it all the time and they don't really know why they're doing it and they do it in the wrong context. Well, I guess that's my point because I, I'm not yeah. saying that we should never do it and I myself have done it, but only one or two shots from, you know, an event or a session, not. 32 shots you know it has a time and place and you can totally yeah. overdo it you know you just yeah. you can overdo it it's like the dutch tilts you know everything's crooked come on yeah <laughs> let's just do a couple and i'm oh man that i'll tell you what i tilt a decent amount but when i tilt it's usually when i'm shooting against a backdrop that you can't really tell that i'm tilting you know yeah. so i'll do that occasionally to create a certain kind of flow like through the image um and it's usually if I'm shooting in front of a blank wall or something like that where you can't tell that I'm tilting. But usually if it's architecture, that's why I love shooting with like a 70 to 200 because I actually hate, I hate warping, you know. I hate when lines like true verticals are not, you know, that goes beyond tilting. Just like even distortion in a frame when I'm shooting architecture and in the scheme of like a wedding image and we're shooting downtown or something. Man, I hate, I hate when lines start going skew like that. Um, but if I tilt, if I do tilt with those kinds of lines, I think it's always for a purpose. Like it's in an effort to get the lines to do something compositionally that makes sense. I always tell people when I teach, if you can flip the image and it works both vertically and horizontally, then you, <laughs> you've probably done something wrong <laughs> with the tilt. <laughs> you know, I've, I, I've been there. We're I've going there. back to the, <laughs> the same idea, though. Um, you know, do what you do, but do it with a purpose. Do it, you know, with a certain reason in mind. Just don't haphazardly do it all the time. There's got to be purpose to it. I mean, that's the thing with photography. I think the better you become, the more experienced as a photographer, you start learning that everything I do should all culminate for one reason, you know, either to bring the viewer's eye to a certain point or, I mean, you should be able to explain your image. You know, I mean, do, do you agree with that? I mean, you should, I mean, not every image is going to be a hundred scoring print comp image, but you know, again, I go back to weddings cause that's mainly what I do. And I tell wedding photographers, you know, when you look at your creative portraits, those images that, you know, you're taking time to take care of the lighting and the posing and all that at the end, you should be able to sit down with someone and take them through every element of that image and explain why it's cropped that way, why the subject was placed here, what kind of lighting you used. I mean, that's, I mean, do you agree with that? I think that's not everywhere. Not everybody starts like that. You get to a certain point where you can do that, but that should be the end goal. I mean, there should be a purpose for everything. And if you don't, then you maybe have to reevaluate, you know, your skill set a little bit, or maybe look on look on improving some of those things. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I agree. Um, I think the the total purpose, no matter you know if you're a wedding photographer or you know a studio photographer like myself, you're telling a story. And I know one of the things that we say in comp, um, you know, people go a little bit crazy with like the borders and, you know, that kind of thing. They'll add stuff into an image that does not support the story that the image is telling, you know, and I think you know, let's parallel that. Um, we are shooting for a story, but if we're putting in a bunch of pictures that don't support that story, then I don't think we've done a good job. Yeah, that makes sense. You get a lot of things that just detract from, you may have something really great there, you know, the concept is there and it's almost there, but, you know, wh whether it's a comp image or not, you just add these different things that distract away from that and, you know, it can really kill an image in the end. Right, right. I'm just saying we should parallel what we do, you know, the same concept that we do for comp. We should parallel that into probably every project that we do, you know, if it's just fluff, yeah. if it's extra, if it doesn't support the project, if we're just throwing, I remember when I first started doing uh, weddings, I think I offered 200 proofs, you know, and I, I would go through and, no. you know, select like 160, 170 and those last 30, I'm kind of stretching and I, I would throw in some fluff that really was kind of extra, really didn't support the story. And, you know, that's because I didn't shoot as well in the beginning. Towards the end, it was more trying to get it down to 200. But I remember adding yeah. adding fluff in, you know, when I first started out. And I, I'm kind of embarrassed about that when I look back on it, actually. Well, overshooting, you know, you kind of get into that discussion. Again, I keep going back to weddings because this is kind of how I relate. But I guess it maybe happens in portraits, too. People overshooting stuff or shooting way too much. We've all heard... 
you know, the term of, well, it's digital and it's free and you could shoot more. And I think in a way, I don't discount that 100%. I probably discounted about 95%. There is that small amount that, yes, you do have the ability to be able to work through things. And, and it's cool to have that where you can actually have that instant feedback. You can you actually look at the images that you're taking. That's a cool thing and you can use it to your benefit. But with weddings especially, I still, I see a lot of what really well-known photographers that are great photographers. Then you hear them talk about their process and, a lot of these people, which I've have, I've have heard like sitting in a WPPI class where I've heard a husband and wife team say that they shoot up to like twenty thousand frames at a wedding. Oh, dear. I mean we're talking well, we're talking well known photographer, and I'm not saying they're. I mean they produce some great stuff, but that kind of takes you to the discussion of what is too much. I mean, is there a point? Um, I'm all for experimentation and and having the freedom to do that, but I think there's also the other point of it is like, well, I think there's a lot of skill too in knowing kind of knowing what you want and going after that, not to say that you don't work through a concept, but you're not just endlessly firing the frame, kind of hoping that, wow, at one point it's going to line up. You know? I mean, what do you think about that? I know you don't shoot weddings now, but, I mean, isn't there isn't there a point where you have to stop? It's like, how many frames can you take? Right. Well, you know, I even have that in regular um, portrait sessions. I used to use cards that would hold, you know, about 400 or more images, you know, I'd put a 16, 32 gig card in the camera and go to town. And uh, I don't know that I ever filled it up, but I shot a lot more than I should have. And so what I did is I started getting smaller cards that would limit me to about 100 frames. Um, Because I think for a a one hour studio session for the packages that I do, 100 frames is just about right. And if I'm shooting more than that, I'm doing the spray and pray thing. Um, And I was able to actually cut down my frames when I got better with posing because it's really easy to shoot an image, chimp the back and go, oh, just, just move this finger slightly. And I don't like shooting that way. And when I started learning about posing better to where I got the pose right the first time, then I only t- would take one or two shots of it and then go on to the next pose. I wasn't fine-tuning it and taking 18 shots of that pose with each of them minutely, tinily different. So it kind of refined the way that I shoot. I shoot with a purpose. It gives me way more time to shoot other poses. I'm not belaboring one pose to death. It also cuts down my post-processing time because I I don't want to be going through 400 images when going through 100 images would be 25% of the time and 25% less stress. Well, it's absolutely true. You talk about there not being a cost involved, there absolutely is a cost involved, and it's time. Right. You know? I mean, it robs it robs time from you. We all know. I mean, at least for me, I don't want to be in front of a computer. I think most people would agree with that. I mean, we love shooting. I love you know, I love working on images for comp and working on. You know, I, I like the editing part of it. I like the shooting part of it. But in the end, I don't want to just be sitting at the desk for hours. You know, I want to be able to do my job, and then I want time to do important things like like fishing, right? Of course, um, and, and and stuff like that, or going on trips, or doing whatever. I mean, you want that time back. So I think a lot of photographers don't realize that it costs you time. There's nothing more valuable than that. You know, I mean, you have to you have to cut it off at some point, and. What you were saying, too, goes back to your skill level. I think, you know, the more you know and the more you can refine your craft, you're not wasting time, like you said, shooting something and then looking at it and saying, oh, wow, I messed that up, and then then changing it again, then shooting it again. Rather than that, you know, it's more about thinking about it more, shooting less and thinking more, you know, taking time with refining the pose, doing all those things before you even pick up the camera. Right. You know, spend, spend the time on that end, and then, you know, then we shoot a frame or two and we may still make a few adjustments, but it's not like... Three frames, then adjust, then three more frames, then adjust, then three more frames. And if you do that at every point, you know, especially in the course of a wedding day, if you're handling every scene like that, man, that's where you get your five or six thousand image days, you know, because every scene you do, you're not thinking as much. You're you're shooting and then refining and then shooting and then refining rather than putting the camera down and just spending some time to really work on the pose and the lighting and then shoot at the very end once you have everything dialed in, you know. You know, I, I know that we are, we're, we're talking about doing that so that it makes it easier on us, but I'll have yeah. to say, I, I think about the message that we're sending our clients 
when we conduct a shoot with them like that or a session. Um, yeah. They probably are looking at us going, oh, my goodness, do you not know what you're doing? You know, they're probably <laughs> um, I don't think it's good for our reputations if that's the way that we operate all the time, you know, or even part of the time. I would love to be. Well, OK, I'm just for example, um, you did uh, my session with Dwight last May. And uh, oh, that was so amazing, wasn't it? It actually was amazing. I know you're being sarcastic, but I, I love the images. <laughs> but I really, it was awesome. I really it was, well, it was awesome because you were there and I was there. I mean, we were both there. That's pretty much all that really matters for okay. an amazing effort. All yeah. right. But anyway, back to yeah. my story. You know, I really appreciated the fact that there was very little oopsies going on I mean probably not any at all you moved us around posed us in a couple different areas and then we went to another site and did some more there and I think like in two two and a half hours we were done and we have an amazing um an amazing selection of totally different stuff to choose from you did not give me two things totally similar and have me pick between them the only time you gave me a double was when you gave me something in black and white and color so i like yeah. that i liked how that went it's and that was that was kind of cool cuz we obviously we know each other so i'm trying to think that was so long ago i mean i probably was a little bit more relaxed with you in terms of how to how we handled the session but I think the number one thing I hear people say, you talk about being professional during a shoot, and and I, I do this myself. I mean, I don't do it as much now, but I still always am very careful with it. When I, especially when we do like workshops in a four day workshop, and I see people shoot and um and all that kind of thing, you see so many people. Like I said, I do it myself. You do something and it doesn't work out, which at some point I think we all do. Like we have a concept, it might not work out, and we move and we refine and all that, but. People have this tendency when that happens in front of the clients to say something like, oh, man, that just – something doesn't look right or that doesn't look good or that's not working. Like that kind of verbiage coming out of your mouth in front of a client is like the worst thing you could ever do. Oh, and, absolutely. <laughs> wouldn't you agree? I mean, yeah. And we, when you start, I think we all do that just because we're not experienced. And I still – you know, you still have to struggle to make sure that never comes out. But, man – it's not the point that you do something that doesn't work. We all get to that point, but just don't say that. You know, just say, "Wow, that's that's great." Now, let you know what? Put your hand up here, or do this, or change the lighting. I mean, you just kind of pivot off that and then refine it and then shoot it again. Don't ever say that kind of stuff in front of a client. Well, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit to something here. Um, when we taught a class together, was it last year, year before? We did that four-day yeah. class up in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That was one of the things that you were talking about during your half of the day. And I was thinking to myself, oh, my gosh, I do that. I will <laughs> I will set up a light or I'll, I'll do a pose. I'll take a picture of it. I'll look at the back of the camera and go, ooh, that, okay, that's not quite right. Let's try this. And I thought, oh, okay, I really have to watch that now. And I'm, I'm really good about it now, but it, you know, it made me think, but you know, a really good example of that is, uh, I, I had a session with a lady not too long ago. And, uh, during the session, I thought I would try something with some natural light over by one of my windows, but the, the light wasn't quite where it needed to be in the sky to give me some good light coming through the window. But I thought, well, I'll, I'll see how it goes. And I was right. You know, when I looked at the um, images afterwards, they didn't really look the way I wanted them to. So I just did not include that five minutes of the session in the proofs. And yeah. uh, I had the, you know, the lady asked, you know, was there anything from the window area? And I said, you know, that just, that just was not up to the quality level of the rest of the stuff. And I just want you to have the best. I didn't tell her that I really misjudged the light and didn't like how they looked and they looked really bad. She doesn't need to know that. Yeah, that's, it's funny. I mean, the thing is with clients, even though we know, you know, we say something like that or it comes out of our mouths, it's just because we haven't refine something or something isn't working technically, but you know, the clients a lot of times just interpret that as they are not doing something right. You know, so you always have to remember 
as much as we're artists and all that, you know, the BS that we say, I'm not saying that's not true, but, you know, we put ourselves up on this pedestal. But honestly, we're selling the experience, too, of the session, which is something that Rachel talks about all the time. Um, and she more so, you know, she's taught me more so about that than, than I've ever experienced. Um, but the experience that they have is just as important as delivering amazing images. So if you say that kind of stuff, it just dampens what they're experiencing. You know, they think that they're doing something wrong or they're not great in front of the camera. And it kind of instills this self-doubt. And that's the last thing that you want during a session, like you want to build up your clients, you know, regardless, I mean, it could be the most boring session in the world, you know, but you still give that feedback and you make every single experience a million dollar experience, especially when you're shooting. Um, I think we've all experienced, I mean, we've all, you know, we all have sessions that are, you know, we feel like we've created some amazing art and then some are more, you know, more, co- oh, man, let's see, I got to be careful with what I say, um, are more just kind of basic and simple and there's nothing like amazingly out, coming out of the box. I mean, we're creating solid stuff, but it's not like, uh, you know, comp worthy kind of stuff, but every one of those should be treated the same in terms of the experience that we give and the feedback that we give. We want all of our clients coming away thinking, wow, that was just an amazing experience to work with, with whoever, with Lenzac photography or with Ted or with Christine or whoever, you know, it's so important how you communicate that and make sure that they come away feeling like a million bucks. Absolutely. You know, I was, I was going back to a, a conversation we had in a previous episode, and we were talking about, um, what are those things, stars on a review. We're talking about a review. And, yeah. you know, I, I started thinking after we got done talking with that, uh, about that, that a lot of those reviews are caused by people commenting on the customer service level and not necessarily the quality of the photography. So the jobs that we do are twofold. You know, we need to deliver a good product, but we need to also be wonderful about the way we're acting when we're doing the project. It's not just all about the end result. It's about the process and how, yeah, like you said, how good we make the client feel, how if they come away going, oh my gosh, our session was so amazing before they even see a proof. That's what we want. Yeah. And I, you know, I always tell this story or late the past couple of years, we had a wedding um, a few years ago out here in Charleston, super nice couple, cool venue, I'll tell you what, man, in 10 years, it was probably one of the few weddings that weather completely ruined the day. I mean, there's, you know, we've all dealt with rain and all that, but to the point where it just, it really made things tough. They had an outdoor ceremony. It was a venue right near, and if you've been in Charleston, it's right on the, um, on the Cooper River there, um, right near the Cooper River Bridge, or near the Ravenel Bridge, I should say, I'm sorry. Um, and this, this deck, this beautiful deck on this venue that faces the river and everything was supposed to be outside and. Well, man, it was one of these Charleston days where we had, like, a torrential downpour that happened, like, every every 30 minutes there was a front coming through. It was one of those days. Wow. Um, and, I'll, and I'll tell you what, super nice bride, she was she was having a tough day. And I don't really blame her. It was because of the weather. But it was one of the first examples where you talk about just the experience and how experience sometimes can trump everything else, you know? Um, but this bride, it was like, we're there for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, ready to start doing some, some portraits. And it started raining, and they were telling her, hey, we gotta, we got to maybe move this inside. And the inside part was, like, super small, and it was just a total nightmare. But she was just kind of breaking down, I mean, naturally, because it was just a tough, it was a tough day. And honestly, I was almost at the point where, you know, she was, you know, she was just, she was dealing with all of it. And me and Rachel kind of had a little aside, and I'm like, man, this is, this is going to be a tough day, you know. And I'm, I'm sort of like, I feel like I'm checking out, you know. Like, I hate to say that, but it's like, God this is tough. I'm not sure what we can do today. And Rach is just like, you know, listen, let me go in there. Let me talk to her. Um, and she just kind of told me, just remember you have to, regardless of what's going on, act like everything is, is amazing. Like just build her up, build the clients up, reassure them and give them a great experience. And don't worry about the fact that you're maybe not going to get, you know, these, these award winning, amazing images, you know, just do the best you can with the situation you've been given and make sure the clients come away with it feeling like they had a million dollar experience. And, that just really, that was, you know, I was kind of going one way. I was getting discouraged, and it sort of just reminded me of that. And I'll tell you what, it rained all day. They, we barely got to go. I think we went outside maybe at the very end of the day it cleared up, and we were able to do some portraits. But we just focused on making sure that they felt like everything was going amazing. I mean, in terms of, it, it was it was not. The weather sucked. It, <laughs> it screwed up the ceremony. All this crap was happening. But, you know, we just rolled with it and act like it was any other day. And then what we ended up doing 
Um, it was kind of funny. Since they, you know, we had all this time for porches and it rained, there was really nowhere else to go and all this crap happened. We actually ended up offering them, hey guys, you know, since this happened, um, a complimentary session a couple weeks after the wedding. We said, you know what, guys, get get dressed back in your, you know, the gown and, and the tux and all this stuff. Um, let's do a couple hour session. We'll go downtown um, and we'll just do all these amazing creative porches that we couldn't do. So you talk about a situation that at the beginning of the day, I honestly thought like, this was going to be horrible, and this bride probably is going to somehow be pissed off at us, you know, because of whatever, just because the day was so, so bad that I feel like it was going to permeate to all the vendors. To a week after we did that second session, three weeks um, later, she wrote, and I think it's still there on, on her Nouveau Images, like a five or a six paragraph review, probably the longest review that we've ever had. And just on and on about how, you know, just how, how she enjoyed working with us and all this. But it's just a great example for me to just remember that, Regardless of the situation, how bad it may seem, deliver the experience. You know, don't worry about the fact that there could be other crap going wrong. Deliver a great experience. In this case, we kind of you know went a little bit above and beyond. We did that extra session for her, and it's a client like that that I thought, man, this this person probably would never refer us. You know, to someone that went out of their way to write this incredible review and is just a, a fabulous client now. You know, so it just it goes to show how important experience it is. You know. Oh, I think that's great. I was I was thinking in my head before you started talking about the review that I bet she is one of your uh, big supporters because yeah. you went to that effort. You know, but think about it from the emotional point of view. And I know you're not like the touchy-feely type, but in the future, that bride is going to look at that wedding album and that wedding album is going to be concrete proof that her wedding day was not how she wanted it to be. So the fact that you went above and beyond so that she could have a beautiful wedding album, I'm betting she forgets about how bad of a day it was, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to say we do that for every single client, but uh, in terms of like, oh, here's all this free stuff and let's do nothing. But it's like, I don't know, that that was just the one day where it was like, I just, I felt bad for them, you know? Oh, I'm, yeah. It's like... And honestly, in 10 years, you know, there's days where it's rained and this and that, but it was like that weather totally screwed the entire day. But, you know, in the end, the experience is what mattered, you know, and, and she ended up being an awesome client. But that that story was more, more, about, more about me and it's like my experience too because I get discouraged like that. You know, you get that stuff that happens and, you know, you go into a wedding or a shoot and you have all these ideas of like what you're going to do and then especially with weddings – Forget your ideas, because then that happens, and the rain happens, and it screws everything, and it's like, a lot of times, that ends up really discouraging you, so, it's just a reminder that you can't, you can't focus on that, you know, you have to focus, even if everything is going to hell, you have to focus on still providing an amazing experience for the clients within that, that set of circumstances, because in the end, that's what they're going to remember, you know, that's going to be the, uh, the kind of end result of what they, their view of Nouveau Images ends up being, or Lindsay Photography, or, or Christine Walsh Newton Photography, whatever, whatever it is, it's the experience that really tends to sometimes even trump the images, as much as I kind of hate that in a way, but, well, you know. Yeah, but you got to think of it from their end as well. Um, you know, the, the experience is part of it for them. So, you know, both have to be good. But one thing I was thinking uh, when you were talking, it's – uh in regards to our mood and if we don't if we aren't feeling it this is one time that fake it till you make it can work <laughs> yeah i love that phrase yeah not me we should buy that has anyone bought that url fake it till you make it, it, it someone has to have purchased that because that could be something i mean i'm just throwing it out there oh uh, we don't need any new projects so don't throw it out there <laughs> well hey let me ask you this so in terms of client so we're talking a little about client experience on the flip side of that, do you think now, say 2017, do you think in a way that client expectations, it's become almost impossible sometimes to to meet client expectations? Like, are people kind of ridiculous sometimes or no? Or do you think people are still fairly reasonable? Or is it getting harder to deliver that kind of thing? What do you think? Well, obviously, you wouldn't uh, use the word ridiculous unless you thought maybe that was the answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm curious because you, you shoot portraits and it's totally different than what I do, but I'm just curious your take on it, you know? Well, I'll have to tell you that that's kind of one of the reasons that I have uh, changed my offerings. And, you know, this is going to sound probably not nice, especially if you are a senior or the parent of a senior, 
But Uh-oh. I think we've kind of gone overboard on the senior thing. Um, How so? Because I'm not going to do a four-hour session and take somebody to three different locations and shoot them in places that they never hang out. You know, everybody wants to go to this waterfall that's like 40 minutes down the road from here. Why? <laughs> Why? Have you? Is that where you got proposed to? Is that where... You, I just don't understand why people want to be in areas that absolutely don't mean anything to them. And so I'm I'm really not a supporter of making a big experience for this senior. Now, I, I understand that if, if you're a senior photographer, that may be the way that you do things because those experiences manifest themselves into bigger sales. I'm coming from the um, attitude that All of my equipment, all of my lights are ceiling mounted in my studio. I have a permanent setup and I'm not big into having a whole second set of equipment so I can go do things somewhere else. And I'm really not into traveling around and carrying my gear. I don't like to carry gear. And if I have to start hauling stuff around, it puts me in a bad mood. So I've kind of changed things up to where... And you don't want that. You don't want... No, I don't want, I don't want, no, no, yeah, you don't. I've been on the receiving, I've been on the receiving end of that many times. Yeah, you were on the receiving end of that last night. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Essentially, constantly, I'm on the receiving end of that, yeah. Uh, But anyway, you know, I've changed my offerings to where I am solely, solely studio only. I, I turn down every single location shoot, but. You know, on the flip side of that, you know, recently I had a mom call me and I had done a portrait of her and her husband a number of years ago. And she had three children and two had already had their senior pictures taken. And obviously she liked my work because she switched over to me for her third child. And the first thing out of her mouth was, I would like my son's senior portraits taken, but I want a portrait session. I don't want one of those fancy senior run all around sessions. And I was thinking, oh, honey, we are going to be good friends. (laughs) Well, it all comes down to your niche, I guess. I mean, I... I'll play devil's advocate and say, you know, you're saying, well, go to these locations that don't really matter. I can see your perspective and I have no problem with it, but Especially again, going back to weddings, or we do we don't do a ton of seniors, but we do some portrait sessions here and there. But for weddings, I think a lot of times, yeah, we'll go to some random spots. And for me though, it's all about what's gonna create a dynamic image. Not necessarily does every single image have a connection that does the couple have a connection to this exact spot. I think the couple has their own connection. Obviously you're documenting this relationship, you know, but the way we handle it, at least our approach, is to create images that have more of that kind of fashion fashionable feel to them and a lot of times that involves going to places that I know can create some sort of feel some sort of particular feeling you know or maybe it's just something that'll create a dynamic image I mean in the end that's really what I'm after um so I can kind of see that perspective with seniors I get your point but I think it's just however you brand yourself you know I mean you have a very different brand than a lot of other people I think as long as you run with that and and that's your thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you know? No, it just um, doesn't we're, work we're, for me. We're all a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't work for me. Now, you do it very well. I mean, you have a really incredible eye, and you. I'm still amazed. You can find the most beautiful image in the crappiest location, and I still don't know how you do it, but you do Even it. Dover. Even, even Dover. Okay, we have to come to an agreement. So <laughs> about you picking on so, Dover. <laughs> so okay, so the bottom line is if you want senior photos, don't hire Christine Walsh Newton. That is that basically what <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. If you if you want to go to a bunch of locations, don't hire Christine. Right. Cuz you know some t- you yeah. know what some of those locations are? They're places like railroad tracks and, oh and you know explaining to a very excited senior why you can't go to a railroad track doesn't make any sense to them and all it does is it ticks them off and it, it introduces awkwardness into you know the session and so you know if that was part of the dealing with things or having to pay extra to get in somewhere like somebody contacted me to have their picture taken in the middle of cleveland stadium they wanted to drive all the way to Cleveland and have their picture taken in some stadium because they were this great big Cleveland Indians fan. And I had to explain to them about permits and legalities and 
travel costs and all of a sudden I'm introducing reality into their session and, and it no longer sounds like fun. They thought I was going to handle all that. It's like, no, you just, you just walk into Cleveland Browns and just bring a lot cutter with you. And yeah. Be good. Yeah. I think that's what you'll, they thought. <laughs> you'll have it. Make sure, make sure you got your settings dialed in and your OCF turned on. Cause you'll have about five minutes before you get thrown into the back of a SWAT vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that irks me about locations is a lot of people want to go to like cookie cutter spots that everyone goes to. Um, again, if you shoot weddings in any city, there are particular spots, and some of them are not bad, but it's like the spots that everyone goes to. You know, and in downtown, you know, if you shoot weddings, you, you all know, I mean, there's places near the Rock Hall and some other spots. And again, they're not bad in and of themselves, but you go there on a Saturday and there's like a taxi line of, of, of these buses, you know, and limos just waiting to go to the same spot. Um, and that's what I try to avoid. You know, I try to tell our couples, hey, we want to go to different spots, but let's find something unique and different. And, and you know, maybe there are things, a place that's special to you that we can go to, but let's avoid just the same old thing. Because in the end, you're paying so much for this photography. And you're getting these final images. The last thing that we want to do is deliver something that is exactly like what someone else is going to deliver, right? I mean, there, there's always a bit of overlap. Obviously, you know, weddings are their own thing, and, and there's some tradition that happens in every wedding. But with the locations, man, I do not want to go to the same spot. And that's just puts you in a rut, too. You know, if we were forced to go to the same location every single week, it just becomes boring, you know? So we want to give you something unique and different and and something that when you get those images back, you're excited about them because you've never seen that, you know? I always tell our couples, too, let us go someplace new and different that when we put your photos out and you show photos to your friends, other people will want to copy your photos, you know? Like, let's be let's be those photographers and not just go to the same old places and create the same old boring images, you know? Let's create something unique. Well, so you that's, know... That's my only deal with that. I think some of that points up to um, ability as well. It could be that you not creative enough to think of different things you know you go to this venue for weddings you do the same shots over and over I'll have to say I I do admire um I am a fan of your work even though I probably don't compliment it as often as you wish but I have never that's for sure I have never seen you duplicate a shot except for that one location on that (laughs) that white bridge that goes across that marsh with all those trees with the moss hanging down behind it you know where i have never i have never shot the same shot there ever (laughs) never never that's the only place i've seen (laughs) i've seen a repeat shot and i mean that bridge is so fantastic that you know i would use it over and over again too but there's there's some overlap i'm not saying there's no overlap i just um Oh, let's put it this way. If I'm going to go to certain places multiple times, I at least would like to find something that's that's unique, and I know that there won't be a, a conga line of photographers there. Can, yeah. I, can I say that? I mean, is that okay? And then you try to reinvent spots as well and do different things, but you know, the, the problem with a lot of these spots, on top of everything else, these cookie-cutter spots, is they're in the most inaccessible places. Like, not inaccessible, I should say. There's, like, nowhere to park um, because it's all paid parking. Like, they're not easy spots to get to. So when I look for locations, like, I try to find stuff that, you know, so, sometimes is in areas that are a bit more run down or something like that. But the cool thing is you can just park there and it's easy to get to. And I don't know. I just don't want to deliver the same kind of crap that everyone does. You know, you want to do something different. You want to get outside the box, you know? Yeah, and that's pretty much why the Pinterest thing used to drive me crazy. People would bring in pictures and go, I want this. And I'm thinking, don't we want to do our own thing and, you know, give you something unique and special, not like everybody else? But I think that's just what they know. They like it, and the, here's, here's what I want. This is what I like. I think we may stop with the Pinterest. Um, that that's going to probably be an, like a five part uh, webinar series on Pinterest. Um, but maybe we should save we should save that juicy uh, juicy pot of goodness there for a, for another episode. <laughs> All righty. Um, uh, oh my goodness! So I think oh, maybe we'll wrap up with that. I mean, so so what's the point? People are, uh, are, are people. I guess are not totally crazy. They're willing to accept a reasonable amount of. Um, uh, what am I trying to say here? Uh, we're talking about customer experience. So, is the is the general feeling then that people are not totally crazy? Like they're semi easy to please, or are they? And that's kind of my question. Going back a while ago, are they still easy to please, or are their expectations totally out of range? What would you say? Uh, Final re- I, answer on that one. I think there's a little bit of both, and it depends on the client base. I would have to say that my clients are not uh, as. Um, hard to please because I kind of have weeded them down because of the specialty area that I shoot in. 
Got it. Okay, that was a very politically correct answer. <laughs> yeah, all of our all of all of our clients are amazing as well. I've never ever dealt with a problem from any client, so that's the answer. No, I mean, in all, you know, no, I'm I'm just saying it's funny. In 2017, I feel with the internet and the reviews and Facebook reviews and. I think it used to be 30 years ago, people left reviews, and we've we've already kind of hashed this out, but they used to be more more understandable. Now I feel like the tolerance for being totally upset is so small, you know? So, But that's a challenge to us, I guess, in a way. We may kind of look at that as business owners as being like really difficult to work with, but it's it, it should push us to really elevate the customer service that we offer, you know? In the end, that's what it should do. We should try to create a model where, man, everything runs so swimmingly that no one is ever going to have a complaint, right? It should up up that for us, I guess, right? Yeah, I, I think from every complaint that you get, <laughs> no, seriously, everything that goes yeah. wrong, every complaint that you get is a lesson on how to change things so it doesn't happen again. So anything that goes yep. wrong is going to refine our process and make us better customer service oriented photographers absolutely well hey i think we'll end with that guys that was today's amazing discussion um you can find well let's let christine tell you where you can find these where can you find these podcasts christine oh these fill podcasts them, them will be on the home page of make photography great again podcast.com awesome where else anywhere else facebook page possibly uh, yes, we will have links to them on our Facebook page. We also look for us on iTunes. We have to um, have iTunes accept this podcast. It might take a couple days, up to two weeks, they said, but we will eventually be on iTunes. And we also have a Facebook channel, or not a Facebook channel, oh my goodness, a YouTube channel. Get it right. I know. Get it right. We, we are so overwhelmed with how many places that we're dealing with right now getting all of our ducks in a row. But yes, YouTube channel for sure cool well that's it guys that's it for now tune in next time where more greatness will commence at this podcast cool see you guys bye bye you have been listening to make photography great again with christine walsh newton and ted linsack come back next tuesday for a brand new episode for more information and access to the podcast archive please visit our website Make photography great again, podcast.com.